I want to ask you the question, who has power? Who has power? Do you feel like you have power? Have you ever been in a situation that you felt powerless? And is it easy to grow accustomed to feeling powerless? I want to look at a scripture today in Ephesians chapter 1. It's in the New Testament. It's written by the Apostle Paul. And this is what he says to us in Ephesians 1.21. He says, far above all principality and power. There's our word, power. And might and dominion and every name that is named. So he's saying that we've been given a power above every name that you can think of. Not only in this world, but in the world that's to come. We've been given a power over every name that could be named. Okay? So I'm going to throw some names out. Ready? Does this mean that we have power over cancer? Every name. Every name that's named. Do we have power over depression? Any name that can be named. Do we have power over anxiety? Do we have power over a broken relationship. Okay, so we're going to build this out, but any name that could be named, the Bible says that we've been given power over that. Now, let's define this word power. This word power is the Greek word exousia. Exousia. If you're a note taker, it'll come up on the screen here. Exousia. And in my opinion of studying the Bible, it really should not have been translated power. This word here should have been translated authority. That we have been given authority over every name. Okay? Authority. This means that through the work of Jesus Christ on the cross, we have been given authority over every principality or, or over Every power of darkness, or we have been given authority over the devil through the work of Jesus Christ. So let me ask an obvious question today. What's the difference then between power and authority? What's the difference between power and authority? We're going to take the next few minutes of our time to describe that to you, to understand the difference between power and and authority. God did not infuse us with power. God did not make us all superheroes. He did not make us, give us all the ability to fly or to jump buildings in a single bound. He did not give us superpower muscles where we could flip over cars. He didn't give us this power as far as what we would think as power, but God did infuse us with authority, with authority. In the fall of Adam, let's think about this for a second, when Adam fell, did God lose any of his strength? No, God didn't lose any power when Adam fell, but what God did lose was an earthly channel for his power. He lost access to release his power on the earth. What Adam lost when he sinned was his authority. He lost his authority on earth when he yielded to Satan. And from the time of Adam until the cross, Satan had all the authority on the earth. So from Adam's fall, to Jesus saying, it is finished, and sitting down at the right hand of the Father, in that time period, Satan had all the authority. But everything changed at the cross. And we have to understand this, because I do listen to a lot of other preachers. I do. I take time to see what other guys are saying. And it just unnerves me, the amount of guys who keep preaching out of the Old Testament. They keep preaching out of the Old Testament, not as a, as a type, but as a fact. <laughs> but everything changed at the cross. The cross was the fulfillment 
of the Old Testament. Everything in the Old Testament was good and perfect and necessary and fulfilled on the cross in Jesus Christ. The whole Ten Commandments was fulfilled in the cross through Jesus Christ. And so when Jesus is asked, what's the greatest law? What's the greatest commandment? He says, well, we can sum up all the laws and all the traditions in just two things. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Because it was fulfilled in love. Everything changed at the cross. Now watch this. Not everything in the Old Testament is in the New Testament, but some things from the Old Testament are in the New Testament. But anything that is in the Old Testament that made its way into the New Testament was made better as it passed through the blood of Jesus. All right, we just gotta get there. We just gotta understand this. Here's what happened at the cross. It tells us in Matthew 28, 18, when Jesus rose from the dead, Matthew 28, 18 tells us this, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. The me there is Jesus speaking. He says, when he rose up, all authority, all power was given unto Jesus in heaven and on earth. He took the authority back. And then he does something mind-blowing. He gives it to us. He gives it to us. He turns around and he gives it to the church. And what I mean church, I don't mean the building or the church organization or the business side or just the pastors. I'm talking that he gave authority to every believer. Every believer has the same authority that Jesus had while on earth. Now you might be thinking, Pastor Mike, I'd rather have power than authority. Then you would be wrong. (laughs) You'd be wrong if you just wanted to be muscular power without having any authority. Let's look what Jesus said in Luke 10, 19. He says, behold, I give unto you What? What's the word there? Authority. Authority. Exousia. I give unto you exousia, power, authority, to tread on serpents and scorpions and over the power. See, there's another word for power. See, we only have one word, power. In the Greek, they have five words for power. And this one happens to be the word dunamis. And here's the funny thing about the word dunamis. It's where we get the word dynamite. The word dunamis basically means potential power. So a stick of dynamite potentially has power, but it has to be lit in order for that to happen. So potentially the enemy has power, but he has no authority to use the power. All right, we're going to build this out. We're going to build this out. He's given you authority over the power, over the dunamis of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. He does not have the authority to inflict pain on you without, you ready? Without your permission. But we end up giving him permission by not having any knowledge of our authority. I hope I'm not getting too deep, but I've been studying a lot lately. Got a lot of time on my hands. Jesus says that he gives us authority over the power of Satan. And and we have to get this. Church, online, people watching in other countries, we have to get this. We have been given the authority over the devil's power, but we don't use it. We don't live that way. We're scared of the chupacabra. (laughs) We're scared of the dark. We're scared of everything around us. We're scared of politics. We're scared. But we're supposed to operate in authority. All right, I need to illustrate this for you. 
And this is the best illustration that I can think of. Think of a policeman directing traffic. Just yesterday, I was driving down the street. There was a car accident right out here on the highway, right out on, on the 17 here. And uh, there was police officers directing traffic to go around the accident. Okay? A police officer directing traffic. He raises his hands to stop cars in one direction, and he waves his hand to allow cars to move in another direction. The police officer in that moment has authority, but he has no power. What do you mean he's got no power? What has more power, his hand or a car? His little six inch hand has no power to stop a car. The car can just keep on rolling. But he has authority based upon his position to tell that car, stop, go, stop, go. Come on, get this. He has authority, but he doesn't have any power. The car has more power than the officer, him or her. He cannot stop the car with his own strength. But by simply raising his hand or her hand, they have the authority to stop the car and tell the driver what to do. I hope you're starting to connect some dots in your mind as to where I'm going with this. The officer has been given the authority over all the power of the cars in that intersection. Now watch this. This is the best part. The power of the local government has been channeled through that officer. The power of the local government has been channeled through that officer. So you know that if you don't do what he says, it will result in having to go to court. It will result in having to face charges, not by him, but by the court system, by the local government that has infused him with the authority to tell the cars what to do. The officer does not stand in that intersection in his own civilian clothes. He doesn't stand there in his own name. He doesn't stand there as Mike McKelvey. He stands there as Officer McKelvey. He stands there in the uniform that has been bestowed upon him based upon the authority given to him by the badge. By the badge. I, ho I hope you're starting to see in your life that you're the officer, that you're the officer, and that you've been put in this earth, not in your own name, not to operate in your own name, and not to operate by yourself, but to operate under the power of God that has been bestowed upon you. Yeah. Jesus gave us authority over all the power of the enemy. Not when you use your name. Your name don't mean a lot. There's a story in the Bible. There's a story in the Bible where these guys, they call them the seven sons of Sceva. And they say, we cast you out in the name that Paul preaches. And the demon said back to them, Paul we know, Jesus we know, but who are you? Eh, ain't nobody, you know. <laughs> and these dudes got run off. In my name, I can't do a whole lot. But in the name that's above every name, in the name that has been put upon me and 
giving me a badge number in, in that name. All the power of heaven has been channeled through me and you to operate in the earth today. Come on, somebody. You don't use your own name. You're not using your own name. You're not trying to stand there in the power of your name. And this is, this is why I see the church at large today struggling, struggling in life. Is because we sit back and we try to think in our own brain how we're going to get through situations. How am I going to, you can't do it. You can't do it. You can't. Because your name doesn't do a whole lot. The Bible tells us this, lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge the name, the name above every name. And in all your ways acknowledge the name. Come on. And he, the name, the name comes through and empowers and produces. Now here's what I got to tell you, when you use the name of Jesus, this is where I get excited. <laughs> when you use the name of Jesus, all hell comes to a stop. Now, now I know this just seems a little far-fetched for people who've never been to a faith church before. But I'm, I'm telling you what the Bible says. Like, I'm not, I'm not adding to this. I am literally just read you the scripture. When you use the name of Jesus... All hell comes to a stop, not because you are so powerful, but because you've been infused with the authority of heaven to use the name. (laughs) Satan stops for the authority because he doesn't want to face the power of God again. You see, he faced the power once before and he lost. And he lost big. If you, if you ever read the Bible, it says that he ascended into heaven to take on God and says, I can do your job. And God was like, bink. And it tells us, oh, how you have fallen from the heavens, Lucifer, son of the morning star. He fell hard. He don't want to face that power again. He does not want to have to stand before the court of the universe again because he broke the law of your authority. God channels all the power of heaven through the Jesus follower, and that's you and I. But only the ones who know their rights and privileges in the name of Jesus. The ones who know their rights and privileges in the name of Jesus. Just throw this out there. When's the last time you used the name of Jesus to fix, win, or take authority over a situation. Now, I gotta take these off. It's like me having that brand new drill I told you about earlier, that brand new impact gun. It's sitting right there on the tool cart, but instead, I reach for the hand wrench and I'm doing it myself. The power's right here. Oh, I, I keep forgetting it's right there. It's, it's, it's kind of new to me. And we're wondering why it's so hard to be a Christian. Come on. Yeah. It ain't! I told you that. Being a Christian's easy. It's easy. The problem is we keep trying to do this life in our own strength, in our own power, in our own resources, in our own mind, in what we can think up. And that becomes hard. That becomes hard. The name of Jesus is higher than any other name that can ever be mentioned in this age. The Bible says it's higher than any name in this age, so in the church age, and in the age to come, in all of the millennium. It's the highest name that can be used. 
Maybe this has happened to you at work before. Someone comes in your office, and they say, this happens to me a lot. This happens around here. Pastor Mike said that he wants X, Y, Z done. And so, because someone used the name Pastor Mike said, people go do it. But guess who never said nothing? (laughs) Pastor Mike. (laughs) Pastor Mike didn't say nothing about it, but they felt the need because they knew in themselves their name, their opinion, their desire, their want had no weight. Nobody's going to go do what they want. But when they say, Pastor Mike said, okay, yeah, let's go. Let's go make that happen right now. Then I walk in the room. What are you guys doing? Well, so-and-so said that you wanted this done. I didn't say that. <laughs> Come on. Has that ever happened to you at work? No, never? <laughs> One time, someone on staff said, Pastor Joe's outside plowing the parking lot. He wants everybody to go move their cars. So if Pastor Joe wants us to move our cars, we're going to move our cars. So we go out there, we start moving our cars. But he didn't know, because he didn't say it, he didn't know anybody was going to be in the parking lot. So he's going back and forth, back and forth. And when you plow, you, you go forward and you put it in reverse and you back up. And he's just backing up, not even looking behind him. Somebody pulls their car out. And when I tell you my dad plows aggressive, He hit that car so hard, he put the bumper in the back seat. (laughs) Then it was a whole situation because he didn't say, but someone used the name. Someone used the name. What you got to understand, when you use the name of Jesus, it outranks any other name. It outranks any other name. It outranks sickness. It outranks disease. It outranks problems. It outranks crises. And we, as believers, have the right, and beyond the right, we have the expectation of heaven to use the name. Mark 16 and verse 17. Watch this. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Here's my expectation. In my name, go cast out devils. In my name, go speak in new tongues. In my name, now, I'm not, I I hate snakes. I don't know why I had to put serpents up in here. I ain't gonna touch no snake. We we ain't having no snake holding service, just so you know. It just says you could, if you show desire, if I had the need to, but I just, no, I don't need, ah! They shall take up serpents. If you drink any deadly thing, it shall by no means hurt you. Watch this. It says, in my name, go lay hands on the sick, and in my name, they will recover. Step into your authority. Do you know why a lot of this doesn't work today? Because we don't use the authority. We pray prayers God, please heal me. God, please. You know how bad I'm hurting. Just heal me. He says, I did. I did. Yeah, but just do more. God, you do more. Because having your son die on the cross for me wasn't enough. Do more. And he says, but I gave you the authority. I gave you the authority to speak to that disease and tell it to leave your body. I gave you authority to speak to that pain and tell it to leave your body. In the name of Jesus. Verse 22 goes on to say this, Ephesians 1.22. And he has put all things under his feet and he gave to him to be the head over all things the church. Now watch this. It says that he has placed Jesus far above all principalities. In verse 22 it says that he has put all things under his feet. He's put him far above the kingdom of Satan and then he he is the head of the church. So we're talking that we are the church. So watch. If 
Jesus is far above all things, and Satan is here, and Jesus is the head of the church. What's between Jesus and Satan? This isn't a trick question. Jesus is here. The devil is here. He said he is the head of the church. What's in between? Church. Yes, us, us, believers. We are in between. He's put us between, which means if Jesus is, now you're going to, you got to get this. If Jesus is the head of the church, then who are we the head of? Who has to obey the authority of the believer? Yeah, 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 come on, come on. It changes things. It changes things. It changes our perspective. Yeah, but Pastor Mike, I, I, well, I, I don't think I could get that cocky to think that the, the kingdom of darkness has to listen to me. That's why the church is defeated. That's why the church is defeated. We, we think that we think that our spirits have a personality and that our spirits could be shy. We think that our spirits can be as insecure as our mind is. And it cannot be. It cannot be. Your mind, your spirit cannot be insecure because your spirit operates in true authority. The problem is you got to get out your own way. God has put us over the power of the enemy. Jesus has given us authority over Satan. The most unscriptural prayer that you can pray. God, the devil's just messing with me. Do something about it. I did. I did. I went down into hell. I beat him up on his, in his own front yard in front of his mama and his papa and his kids and I took the keys of authority and I rose victoriously and I gave it to you. That's what I did. Can I throw this out there to you today? God won't do something for you that he empowered you to do. God's not going to do something for you that he told you to do. He's not like us. We tell our kids, make your bed, make your bed, make your bed. They don't make it, we're going to make it for them. But what would you teach them? That mommy's going to bail them out. Mommy's going to fix it. Mommy's going to do it. God said, I gave you authority to walk there in. Mm. In our jobs, I, I, I begin to think, why don't people operate in more authority? It's because we've been programmed not to. We've been programmed not to. Like even in our own jobs, we're programmed not to use authority. We're, we're given tons of responsibility. Do this, do this, do this, do this. If someone gets hurt, you're responsible. But let me ask you, do you have access to buy anything you need to do the job? Well, no, I, I don't. I have to go fill out nine purchase recs and then wait three months to get an answer if I can spend. Then you don't have authority. Then you don't have authority. Authority comes when you can go obtain all the things you need to do the job properly. So we're programmed to have tons of responsibility. We're programmed to have all of the laws that we have to follow all the rules, all the things that we can't do. But we never step into what we can do and what we should do and operate as if the kingdom of God is backing our play. So when Jesus says, all authority is given to you, go make disciples, we don't know how to operate in that. But I gotta show you what happens. Every time the name of Jesus is used, I started down this track and then I got distracted. Every time the name of Jesus is used, hell stops and heaven stops, because we're in between. Heaven stops 
and hell stops waiting for instructions. Now, what I'm talking about is when the name of Jesus is used in faith. I'm not saying when you use Jesus Christ in a curse word. When the name of Jesus is used in faith, hell trembles and heaven rejoices. Hell trembles because it remembers the butt whooping it got. Heaven rejoices because it remembers the victory that it won. Both kingdoms stop. They stand at attention and they wait for the instruction from a believer who knows their authority in the name of Jesus. Who's got the power? Who's got the power? Followers of Jesus who know who they are. I got to speak to some young people today. Young people today, you've got the power in the name of Jesus. You've got the power in the name of Jesus. The person who considers themselves shy, you have the power in the name of Jesus to break that lie off of your life. You ain't shy. You ain't shy. I, I, let me just tell you right now, you ain't shy. God, God has never made a creation to be shy. Never. You were made in the image and likeness of God. You, you have maybe a tendency to be more introverted, but introversion does not equal shyness. You accepted a lie and a label from what your mama or your daddy somewhere, oh, they're shy. You were never shy. You just didn't want to smell that person's breath who was all up in your face. Your spirit man is not shy. Every time the enemy comes knocking at the door to try to bring something into your life, trying to bring depression, trying to bring sickness, trying to bring disease. I, I, I don't know who's at the door. Is what maybe your mind is, but your spirit's always ready for the fight. It's ready to take its place and its authority. Only followers of Jesus who know who they are and who know that they have the power of the kingdom of God backing them will operate in true kingdom authority. And listen, I'm not trying to be some weirdo. Seriously, I'm not trying to be some weirdo. I, I, you know, I can feel even people watching online, they're kind of like, man, this guy's lost his mind. He thinks he's Clark Kent, some superhero. No, I don't. I don't think I'm anything. I'm just, I read one Bible verse to you. And I'm literally defining what Paul wrote in the Greek to the church. He's, he's, he's kind of in the same frustration. You have the authority in Jesus. Why aren't we using it? We are instructed to use the authority in the name of Jesus as we move and as we operate in our lives. We are to stop certain things and call other things into existence. But do you? Do you have power? Are you using the authority given to you to stop the movement of the enemy in the intersections of your life? Because that is what God expects us to do with the sacrifice he made by giving his son Jesus Christ. He did not allow his son to die on the cross for no reason. This was the reason. This was the reason. Not that we would just have heaven but that we would begin to live that life now. That we'd live it now. He says, I've given you the authority to walk in kingdom power. I wanna ask you today, are you walking in the power of the name of Jesus? And if you're not, it's for one of two reasons. One, you don't have access to it. Only Jesus' followers have access to the power in the name of Jesus. And Acts 1.8 says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You will receive this power. And that power is actually dunamis power, that he will endue you with potential power. 
And what's the potential? Like what, what ignites it? Your authority. When you speak it, when you move in it, it explodes and happens in your life. So either you don't even have access to it because you're not a child of God, or you do have access to it, you just didn't know you had it. That drill, that impact gun has been sitting on the shelf for 25 years and you're still using the wrench. It's there, it's ready, it's at your disposal. Take hold of it. If you're here today or you're watching online and you've never had the opportunity to have access to the power in the name of Jesus Christ, we wanna offer that to you today. And here in the room and those online, we do that by praying a prayer. And it goes like this, dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and to make me new. Thank you for accepting me in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you're watching us online today and you prayed that prayer for the very first time, can you click that hand raise button or type AMEN in all capital letters in the chat room wherever you are. We'd love to connect with you and follow up with you. We have a book called Starting Point, which is a, a, a seven day devotional that gets you started in your walk with Jesus Christ. We'd love to send that to you. If you're here in the room today and you prayed that for the very first time, would you allow us like two seconds to celebrate you and just wave at me? You said, hey, I prayed that prayer for the very first time. Anyone here today? Real quick, anybody know? Good, yes, you over there, all right. Go ahead and stop by the Welcome Center or, or see one of the uh, care team members. They'd love to give you that starting point book. And maybe today you're still a little uncomfortable. Maybe you're on the fence. You're like, I don't know about this guy wearing this multicolor shirt and uh, neon shoes uh, with all these flashing lights on stage. I'm not really sure about this whole thing. That's okay. That's all right. Um, stop by one of the tables and see if you can pick up some information about what we believe, who we are. We have a book called Welcome Home. It talks about Christianity. We have a starting point book and it's available at any of the Welcome Centers uh, throughout uh, the, um, in the lobby. So uh, as I close, I just wanna tell you this. We were able to complete all the carpeting this week in the family room. It was a lot of hours on our knees, gluing and putting these squares down. Uh, we had a great time. This week we'll be finishing up all the cove base and, and kind of button up the room. We're gonna put some fresh paint on the walls and, and you know get this room done the way that we want it to be in here, all right? So thank you for your generosity to help us do that. We were able to pay cash in full for all the carpet squares. But as we leave today, I wanna encourage you that um, we cannot do what we do week in and week out without the generosity of all the believers. And I'm not trying to have some high pressure sermon here at all about this, but um, during these times, let's just be honest, like a lot of things have changed. Givings have changed. The amount of people that we can have in church has changed. And so we are trying to continue to do church the way that we've always done it and keep the quality of what we do um, up there. And we can only do that by you connecting with us and being consistent in your weekly giving. So let's pray. Father, we thank you today that your word will never return void, but it will accomplish exactly what you set it forth to do. We thank you, Lord, for every seed that's sown into this kingdom the kingdom of God. It is returned to the believers, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. We thank you, Lord, for that. That you said that as we give into your kingdom, that you open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there's not room enough to receive. Lord, as we leave here today, I pray that that word that is sown in our hearts produces crops that will remain in our lives. I thank you that we are protected and safe throughout this week. Everything we set our hands to would prosper and be successful in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We love you. Have a great weekend.